The Lord is still to this day searching to and fro, and he's looking for a resting place. He's looking for people who don't strive against him, who aren't wrestling against him, who don't have, you know, a hundred different agendas that are outside of his own agenda, and he's looking for a place where he can rest. The house of prayer is his resting place. But before we can be a corporate resting place, we have to become an individual resting place. The Lord wants us as individuals to become a house of prayer, a tabernacle, a tent of meeting. Do you know that your very frame was made for the presence of God? Body, soul, and spirit, the way that you were designed, you were created as a tabernacle. You were created as a place of prayer for the spirit of God. You all know that your body, soul, and your spirit Whenever you, how many of you would call yourself born again believer? Yes, we've been born again. When you, when you signed up for Christianity, when you said yes to the blood of Jesus and you received the forgiveness for your sin, you were born in the spirit. And that desert of your spirit was flooded with the uncreated God. The uncreated God lives on the inside of you. Do you know that it says in the scripture that the fullness of God dwells in your inner man? That whenever you said yes to him, he invaded you like he did the tabernacle of old. When the glory of the Lord would fill the temple of old and the priests would fall out under the presence and they would all cry glory and they would shout for glory and they, they couldn't even stand in the presence. Or when the presence that came on the mountain with the children of Israel and it shook the mountain and the trumpets were going and the, the children of Israel were screaming and running away, they couldn't even, they were so terrorized by the presence they didn't even know what to do with themselves. That presence moved in to your spirit the day that you were born again. You have the uncreated God living on the inside of you. You have everything that you need for life and godliness, for power, the fullness. Do you know that you're never going to get more of God than you have now living on the inside of you? When you were born again, you received the fullness, the very seed of God, the very essence of God. His very presence is living in you, and you are the house of prayer. You are the tent of meeting. You are the tabernacle. When we come together as individuals who are filled with the glory of God, then corporately he begins to break out among us and one day he's gonna fill this room in a manifest way that we can see it with our eyes and the world will see it and he'll go into the streets and the highways and the byways. We see a little bit of that now. But for the most part, in this hour, it's happening on the inside of you. But here's the thing. The manifestation of that spirit inside of you happens in your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And though you have the fullness of Christ dwelling inside you, your mind has to be renewed. Do you know, close your eyes, just for a second. That is your soul. Hello, soul. That is where you live. That's the soul. Okay, open your eyes. The spirit of God, it says, is like in your belly, like right here. You know, if you ever you get that gut feeling or that the spirit, if you ever feel the spirit of God, the presence of God, like in your belly, the Lord wants us to learn to fellowship with the spirit. It's that Paul prayed that Christ would dwell in our hearts through faith and that we would be strengthened by the spirit of God with divine might and energy on the inside. He was talking to believers when he said that. That's not about salvation. He's not saying, I pray for you Christians that you just keep getting saved over and over again, that Jesus keeps moving into your heart. No, he's saying, I'm praying that the fullness of the spirit that is in you would rise up and take over your mind, your emotions, your heart, your desires, your will. This is where the battle is. This is where the fight is. It's in the arena of the soul. He is after, which is the same thing in this, in this context, I'm using it interchangeably with heart. The Lord is after your heart. He is literally living on the inside of you and he wants to invade your heart. You are a sacred space. You are the most sacred space in all of the created order. 
of all of heaven, of all of earth, of every piece of property, of every landmark, your soul, your heart is the most sacred piece of real estate. Yet we highly and criminally underestimate the power of our mind, the power of our heart. How many of you ever feel like you're just at the mercy of your mind? You're just kind of at the mercy of your imagination or you're at the mercy of your emotions and you just feel like you're kind of being led around by some wild stallion that's leading you where you don't want to go. Did anybody, does anybody know that feeling? You're like, I don't even know how I got here. You just kind of feel out of control emotionally or in your imagination and you just feel like you're always at the mercy of your mind. Well, the psalmist would talk to his soul and he says, listen, O oh soul, whenever you're in the depths of despair, I am not at your mercy. Listen, O oh soul, why are you downcast? Put your hope in God. And he would speak to his soul. And the Lord wants us to take control of our inner life. I'm telling you, you will not walk in the fullness of the power of God in your ministry, on your words, in your worship, in your relationships, in your finances, until you learn to control your inner life. A man who can control his spirit is stronger than a man who can conquer a city, is what the proverb says. But so few will fight this fight. So few will fight the fight that's from the inside out. But the spirit of God is literally living on the inside of us and he is waging war on our behalf against our lust, against the, the pride of life against the things that hinder us from being a tabernacle, a place where God can rest. But there is a place in the spirit. It says we labor to enter into rest. It takes work to get there, to get the reins of our mind, to get the reins of our emotions and all of our lust and our, our desires and our preoccupation with ourselves to pull all those reins and say, no, we're going to go drink from the water of faith. We're going to drink from the water of the spirit. I'm not going to live like somebody of this world under the sun. Life under the sun is a vanity and a chasing the wind, but by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us, he has given us the capacity to live transcendent, to live untouchable, unmovable, rooted and grounded, unshakable, unstoppable. There is a power that's indestructible living on the inside of you, but you have to access it. He's a person, you have to talk to him. You know, we're not waiting around for something to fall down from the sky. The Father already poured out the Spirit. He poured out the Spirit on Pentecost. He poured out the Spirit already. Now, there's going to be different measures of different manifestations, but we're not waiting around for, for something to fall down from the sky. The person of the Holy Spirit is the greatest treasure of heaven on this side of time because he is what gives us access to Jesus. He gives us access to the Father. He makes us one with that holy, pulsating heart that's been burning from eternity past. That same spirit that is in, the, in Jesus. You know, if you're, I, I've said this many times, let's say your best friend is standing in front of you and going, you know what, I'm gonna move away to a faraway country. There's no internet, there's no phone. We're not gonna be able to talk. But don't worry because I'll put my spirit in you and we'll actually be closer because you'll know what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, what I'm doing, and we'll be together all the time. You would think, what? You would think that is insane. That's what Jesus did though. And when he said to the 12 disciples, he's, they're sitting there and he goes, he said, actually, I'm going to go, the Father's going to give you the Spirit, and it's going to usher in a whole new dispensation until I return to the earth, and the Spirit is going to be in my stead, so to speak. The Spirit is going to become the teacher, the guide, the Spirit. We have underestimated the power of the Spirit, and we have relegated him to charismania. He is a teacher. He is a friend. He is a comforter and he's closer than a brother, and he's living on the inside of you. 
The Lord wants us to learn to become a house of prayer, to become one with that burning holy fire that lives on the inside of us.